Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my presentation on laser prism scanning with Bessel beams. So far, the laser prism scanner worked with a Gaussian beam. So if you look at the intensity distribution of a Gaussian beam, it's very bright at its center and then fades out when, it, when you move to the edges. But there are other ways uh, in which laser light can be tailored. And then it's called structured light. And you see that there are multiple shapes in which you could form a laser bundle. Uh, and we'll be speaking about one specific form in this presentation, it's where this light approximates what is known as a Bessel beam. Um, and so the presentation is organized as follows, and I will start out with the motivation if we look into the Dutch ecosystem. And so the Dutch ecosystem, as it's known, is also investing in laser prism scanning, although it'd be a different variant where they move multiple lasers per prism, which I believe has certain disadvantages. Uh, and one of the things they're also looking into is laser scanning with structured light. So this is based upon a patent from CERN, and we'll be talking about that in this presentation. And basically what it has is it has the ability to keep the light in focus over longer distances. And they have a special lens to create that, or special technology to create that, and then use a Galvo scanner to um, a mark patterns on a substrate. Now, let's, let's look into this technology more deeply. So a Gaussian lens, had, there you have a collimated bundle, which is focused by this lens and then focused into a point. And then you get the Gaussian intensity distribution, as you see on the right. And, and the issue there, or the challenge, uh, what Bessel beams solve is that this wavefront is very curved. And so Bessel beams do not exist huh, because they are a solution, if I'm correct, for the Maxwell equations, but they require infinite en energy. And as such, they cannot exist in reality, but you can approximate them. Huh, so you can elongate your focal length. And that is, for instance, done by axicons, where the fo focus is along a line. Um, and then along this line, you have an intensity distribution where you also see rings. Uh, so, but you have a longer focal length or a focal depth. Uh, and so, when I speak about the depth of field, I mean that the, the 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 size of the Gaussian bundle increases once you move away from the focal length, and if you move the the Rayleigh range away, how your your focus length increased by the square root of two. Um, so, so that is an issue uh, if you go for small spots, and uh, so 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 that, so that's a challenge there. And that's also why in 3D printing it is studied now more deeply. Uh, so Bessel beams, as said, do not exist, but an approximation was generated first by Donan in 1987. And so there are multiple ways of creating these, app, these approximation, and Exacon is a very popular method of doing that. Uh, so for the Rayleigh range of a normal Gaussian beam, so that is proportional to the spot size squared divided by the wavelength. And with the uh, hexagons, it's different uh, how you don't multiply, uh, you don't square the spot size, but you multiply by the diameter of the entry bundle, I believe. And because that's much longer than your spot size, how you will have a longer focal length. And so, so that can be very advantageous. Now, uh, CERN, has, so that's a well-known institute from Switzerland, uh, looks into ways uh, where this axicon can be improved. And so, so they filed for an improvement of the axicon, and basically it boils down to that the properties of their system is better, so, so they can uh, maintain the focal length for a longer distance. And that IP was split over two startups. Uh, so, and focal look, looks into laser marking, and Aircision looks into laser communication. Um, and the Claim as so the central claim of their patent pulls down to that they improved it by creating a curved substrate which points to the source, as so it's no longer flat as in the hexagon. Uh, they also have a focusing element, this was introduced a bit later, uh, as so this is in the claim as it is now, and the refractive index of the medium is higher than 1.8. Um, yeah. And, and the applications, um, what what they see, has, so I'm talking about this in focal startup now, is for instance, the laser dicing of PCB. So if you create chips, 
you still, sometimes still need to cut them into pieces. Huh? And I think that's believed when we talk about laser dicing and laser direct imaging, as I have been doing, but then with these uh, so-called bezel beam-like uh, waves. And they're also looking into marking. Huh? So, for instance, marking of avocados with barcodes or Coca-Cola bottles with barcodes. Um, and they um, say that that is more durable uh, because there is no less pollution. Uh, of course, a challenge with lasers um, is that they require a lot more energy and, and are typically a more expensive solution. So, so I would, uh, I'm not really convinced on that uh, point. Okay, so moving back to laser prism scanning, as I know now, I think that the uh, Infocal startup is using uh, Galvo scanners and not uh, laser prism scanners. Uh, so, so that's why I want to look into it for more um, uh, for my for my case. Uh, so to recap on my technology, so I have a laser die out and and then it emits light and this light emerges because it's uh, moving away from a small point. And then it's focused into a point uh, by a spherical lens uh, while it goes through a prism and then by rotating a prism you can create a line. Now later I decided to add two cylinder lenses to that um, and these cylinder lenses they the first lens acts orthogonal to this I mean parallel to the scan line and the second lens acts orthogonal to the scan line and they also circularize the light bundle so it is again a circle and not an ellipse. Uh, so, so these are the two things which is done by these lenses. Uh, and what's very important is it reduces cross-scan errors. So if your prism is not mounted correctly, uh, so if you then move it around, it will also move upward and downward, as you see in the lower right. And then your laser bundle will start to move orthogonal to the scan line. Now, uh, to fix that, uh, what you could do is play a lens behind the prism. Huh? So what we do know is that uh, if the prism is perfect, the, the outgoing rays will be parallel to the incident rays. And we know that um, a laser or a lens focuses all parallel rays into the same point. Huh? So if we place a, a lens behind the prism, huh, then this cross aberration would be uh, removed. But it would also remove the function of the prism as it as a whole. So that's why I divided in two cylinder lenses: one which acts orthogonal and one which acts parallel to the scan line. Now, and my claim now is so I want to extend that for the case for bezel beams. And so I think if you use it the uh, in focal technology as is, or if you use hexagons for that matter as is. Um, you, you might have an issue with cross-scan errors. Huh? So, so that's what I want to uh, fix. But, but first, what I, what I claim, because that still has to be done for legal reasons, is I claim that there is a uh, laser source, uh, huh? which is uh, focused by an hexagon, for instance, and, and which is then moved by a prism. Huh? So, so I claim that. And then I claim the same thing for the CERN-like uh, case. And then, um, um, and so for instance, I could see that there are also other lenses which could be crucial. So for instance, you could also form a ring uh, with, with another technology, and that would be useful, for instance, for moving particles. Uh, um, this is less linked to this talk, but, but that could be useful in an optical tweezer. Now, as I said, to remove the cross-scan error for bezel beams, you can deploy a similar plot where your first uh, lens uh, focuses the lens uh, parallel to the scan lines and then creates a bezel beam and the second lens focuses orthogonal to the scan line and also creates a bezel beam. Uh, but now they are bezel beams and not um, Gaussian beams. Uh, and then what I also claim is that the cylinder lenses uh, have a spheric surface either on both sides or one side, in which case they would be a spheric line generators if I'm correct. And this is also done just to legally extend this, this freedom. Um, and then the I claim that the uh, properties of the spheric lens and the first lens are merged into one optical element. And so then this element would have, say, a spheric properties on both sides, which are best optimized for this situation. Um, and then finally, 
uh, that the two lenses have, yeah, so, so that the spheric line generators have curved substrates on both sides. This is a bit to prevent these CERN patents. So I think that the CERN patent works for the case where you do it at once, right? So you create um, with one element which focuses along two dimensions. So the CERN patent doesn't split it into two. Uh, so one dimension first and then the other dimension, but those both dimensions at once. And for laser prism scanning, that might not be beneficial to do it at once uh, because you're still also confronted with your cross scan error and also with some laser sources, uh, you might want to circularize them. So, so that is um, a thing uh, there. Now, and then finally, uh, I, I, you can also have a mix of both bundles. So you can have a bundle which both looks like a, ga a normal Gaussian in one direction and like a Bessel in the other direction. And you can find literature for that online in that article. And you see that they, they speak about a, a generation method for to create something like a Bessel beam, which creates a one dimensional Bessel beam. And then the on other direction, it's still like a more traditional Gaussian beam. Um, so, and I think that could also be uh, beneficial. So my first lens would be still be a regular, say cylinder lens, which creates a Gaussian spot. And so which is focused uh, parallel to the scan line and creates a Gaussian uh, bundle. Uh, and the blow up of that spot, so it could still blow up if you go out of focus, but that would be easier to crack because you can do multiple exposures along the scan line. So you could use, say, uh, multi patterning and you can do that very easily along. Although if you go orthogonal to your scan line, it is hard to, to get multiple lines there. So, so it's hard to do multi patterning there. And then that would done be by the second lens. And so that would be more like an hexagon, but then for one dimension where it creates this, say, bezel uh, like a beam. Okay. Thank you for your time. I think that that is what I wanted to add.